typically down here at the bottom of the pit, we're taking order of the crusher. And it's usually about an hour round trip. Once you take your breaks, you're probably maybe eight or nine loads for the whole day, assuming everything goes right. The U.S. is running out of miners. More than half the nation's mining workforce, about 220,000 workers, are expected to retire by 2029, and the number of candidates willing to fill those slots is shrinking. At the same time, demand for rare earth minerals like lithium, cobalt, and copper, critical components used to make batteries for electric vehicles and smartphones, is rising. Globally, at least 384 new mines will need to be built to meet demand for EVs by 2035. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 also offers a tax credit on production costs for critical minerals that are mined or produced in the U.S. From an industry perspective, you're going to have people that are that are not experienced, you know, building mines, and that's a really, really dangerous gambit when you look at how technical and how complicated mining projects can be and how crucial it is to have the right skills and the right plans in place. We've seen some mining operations actually shut down for lack of workers, and that's created a shock to the supply chain in North America. Nearly two-thirds of mining CEOs say the lack of talent will have a large or very large impact on profitability over the next decade. And the problem is not just a domestic one. Australia, where the mining industry accounts for about 75% of the country's exports, has seen job vacancies more than double since 2020. It comes down to if you can't find the miners, you can't get the materials. If you can't get the materials, then in many cases, we're not going to reach these policy goals. The legacy issues of mining, especially for the U.S., is continuing to discourage or drive people away. I think the war for talent's real. Most people would say they don't grow up saying, I'm going to go work at a mine. CNBC got a behind-the-scenes look at Rio Tinto's copper mining operation in Utah to better understand the role miners play in the transition to green energy and look at the challenges the industry faces recruiting new applicants. Sam Vigil is a haul truck driver and team trainer at Rio Tinto's Kennecott Mining Operation in Utah. I had my own business for a long time during that housing crash. Pretty much lost, lost everything I had, really. Today, he pilots a 350-ton truck. At the bottom of the pit, three-quarters of a mile beneath the surface, a giant shovel loads earth and ore, about 300 tons in total, onto the back of his vehicle. At any given time, about 100 haul trucks operate in the mine. We're listening to the horn for the shovel. He's going to honk us out when we're fully loaded. When you first get on up here, you get in this thing and it feels like, oh my gosh, I'm driving a house around. I would say probably after a couple of weeks, you, you kind of get used to it because everything up here is so big. I mean, the shovels are bigger than the trucks. Drivers like Vigil are vital to America's transition to clean energy. The mine where he works produces about 200,000 metric tons of copper annually. EVs, on average, need four times more copper than traditional gasoline vehicles. Globally, copper demand could double from 25 million metric tons to nearly 49 million metric tons by 2035. The amounts are staggering. We need these products. We need them to be made in the United States. But an aging workforce preparing to retire is causing headaches for the industry. The average miner in the U.S. is 46 and a half years old, six and a half years older than the average worker. Our workforce is aging. There is a lot of baby boomers that will be looking to come to retire or are already retiring and um, we're continuing to rely on their expertise. We need all types. I, I need financial people. We need lawyers. We need engineers. I also need welders. I need fitters. I need operators. It's not just haul trucks, it's not just shovels. You can be on our blast crew, which you get to play with basically dynamite each and every day. After the ore is dropped off at the concentrator, the material is then transferred to the smelter and refinery, where it is turned into 99.9% .9 pure copper. The median salary for a mining machine operator was $57,000 in 2022. The median pay for a mining engineer that year was over 
one of the things I really love about this company and this industry is I know it's going to be here tomorrow. It's not in the back of my mind where I have to worry that will I have a job tomorrow? Is my career in mining going to end? Securing the supply of minerals to power EV batteries, wind turbines, and solar panels is one of the nation's top priorities. Demand for critical minerals could increase sixfold over the next two decades. Lithium and graphite needs could increase as much as 4,000 percent. But with a legacy that includes environmental impact and boom and bust cycles, the mining industry is having a hard time attracting the next generation of workers. That is really the nature of the beast in mining. You're dealing with local communities in very remote regions. You're building gigantic holes in the ground. In some cases, they're big enough to see with the human eye from the moon. It's hard to do these things without having some impact on the local surroundings and the local people. I think there's a big disconnect with what people think mining is and the popular image of industry being something where people are working underground and they wear a headlamp and they use a pickaxe and the actual realities of what work looks like in that industry. It's technologically sophisticated, it's professional, and, and it's cutting edge in a lot of ways. According to a recent study, 70% of respondents between the ages of 15 to 30 years old would definitely not or probably not work in the mining industry. A recent mining report said the most sought-after workers did not see the industry as attractive. The work is also thought of as unsafe. There were roughly three dozen mining work-related fatalities in the U.S. in 2022. That perception has caused the talent pool for industry jobs to plummet. The number of mining engineering students in the U.S. was just 600 in 2022, down from 1,500 in 2015. Fewer than 200 mining engineering students graduate in the U.S. each year. By contrast, China has over 38 mineral processing schools with more than 44 mining engineering programs. 25 years ago, uh, we had 50 very strong, robust programs across the United States in mining, mineral engineering, mineral processing, and extractive metallurgy. Now we have a total of 14 university programs in the United States, and some of them are relatively small. In terms of even the studies itself, mining is quite technical and, and rigorous. And then you have all these legacy issues that you need to get people over. So it's a combination of factors. The industry has also had to contend with a lack of diversity and allegations of workplace misconduct. Only about 14 percent of mining jobs globally are held by women. A 2022 investigation, for example, found almost half of Rio Tinto employees experienced bullying over the preceding five years, and almost a third of female workers experienced sexual harassment. Companies say they are reforming. It all comes down to leadership. Are we committed to making this change? Are we making the right decisions in attracting talent when it comes to diversity, whether it's gender, nationality, or the communities that we're operating in? We're making tremendous progress, but we have a long way to go, both as an industry and overall to attract the right talent, but certainly we are Tinto. However, the industry still faces significant challenges bringing in new recruits. Somebody goes to the university to study engineering and they have a couple of options when they graduate. They can go work in Silicon Valley for some big tech company that's all the read. Or you can go work in some underground mine in the middle of nowhere. The beach in California in a cool industry or this old economy industry that nobody really pays much attention to, nobody really cares about, it's a dirty job. The U.S. has over 12,500 active mines that produce an estimated $82 billion in 2020. The market cap of the top 40 mining companies was $1.2 trillion in 2022, up from just $400 billion in 2003. Rio Tinto's Kennecott mining operation outside of Salt Lake City is unique not just for its ore body, which in addition to copper contains gold, silver, and tellurium, but also for its location. One thing about Kennecott is we're on the doorstep of a capital city. Most mines are quite remote, so I, I call it the best mining camp uh, globally. We have roughly 2,500 employees you know, based here in Salt Lake City. Uh, roughly 12 to 1,300 of those are going to be our frontline operators and maintainers. That's about 60% of our workforce, and then the other 40%, this is our engineers, our technical people. Despite that location and access to talent, finding workers can be challenging. 
A lot of tech industry is also moving into Salt Lake. So we have to be very competitive, right? It's not just wages. When unemployment is, you know, roughly 2% here in Utah, people have a lot of options. To boost the number of miners nationwide, the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee passed the Mining Schools Act of 2023. The proposed law would require the Department of Energy to provide $10 million annually for eight years to colleges and universities to train the next generation of mining engineers. Some think the initiative doesn't go far enough. As somebody who's in higher ed now and, and who sees how far a million dollars will go, I can say that it will require a lot more investment to actually move the needle on, a, on an ongoing basis for the nation. Mining companies have taken steps too. Rio Tinto committed $150 million to fund research programs led by the Imperial College London, aimed at transforming the way materials are produced, used, and recycled. The other thing that we do is we sponsor a lot of STEM work that happens across the valley, encouraging kids to get into those sciences and engineering classes. Automated vehicles and machines could also provide some relief. At Rio Tinto's office in Perth, Australia, Operators monitor autonomous drilling rigs and autonomous haul trucks deployed at the company's network of 17 iron ore mines in the country's western Pilbara region, roughly a thousand miles away. We've got about 370 autonomous haul trucks in our fleet out of a total number of just above 400. So it's a very high percentage now that are autonomous. The miner of the future hopefully is a bit more of a software engineer and mining software code programmer rather than necessarily a truck driver. But we do have to overcome this challenge. There's no doubt that um, we are facing a bit of a you know, labor shortage. Overcoming that shortage could be key as the industry ramps up production of critical minerals needed to power clean energy technologies. The U.S. imported more than half of its consumption of 51 minerals in 2022 and was 100% dependent on imports for 15 of those minerals. The reality is without copper, without aluminum, without mining, there's no energy transition. There's no decarbonization. In fact, when you look around you, everything around you is either grown or mined. So if we need to build the infrastructure for the world to continue to advance, we need mines. 